Right, so we're changing topics. You got to start talking about inductive reasoning. How, how do we prove or how do we show that stuff is true or not true? So this one, you know, gave us some months in a row. It asks you what comes next. January, March, May. It looks like it's skipping a month every time. So May, skip June, and then go to July. What about the next one? Look in advance, see if you can figure out what the next number would be. 35, 7, 14, 21, 28. Looks like we've got multiples of 7. So we'll go up 7, we'll go to 35. This one, see what you think, what would come next. We'll talk about that one in class. So what did we just do? What, 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 what reasoning, what kind of thinking did we do to get these next couple of terms? We call it inductive reasoning. It's the process of reasoning that a rule or statement is true because specific cases are true. It's pattern based. We look at a pattern and try to figure out what would come next in that pattern. Okay, another vocab. Conjecture. A conjecture is a statement that is believed to be true. You gotta pause, pause to get these definitions done. Please know what these words mean. Again, vocab important in the class. Alright, so if you're asked to prove something is true, that is difficult to do. Because if it's if we're saying something is true, it, it must be true 100% of the time. And so to prove something is true 100% of the time, again, that's hard. To show something is false, all I need is one example to show that it's false. And we call that the counterexample. An example that proves that a conjecture or statement is false. I just need one example to show that something is false and I've just disproved the conjecture. Okay, so it asks us to do something here. It says, evaluate the following conjectures. It says, two complementary angles are not congruent. So is that a true statement or is it false? If it's true, I have to be able to show that it's true always. If I'm going to say that it's false, I just need one example. So two complementary angles are not congruent. Is that always true? Well, here's my example. I've got this 45 degree angle and I have this 45 degree angle. These are complementary angles and they are congruent. False. This is a false statement. That was my counterexample. I showed that I could have complementary angles that are congruent. Okay, let's come over here. We'll, we'll go over this one in class. So again, you, you either gotta say yes, that's true 100% of the time, or just find one example where that is not true. Again, we'll talk about that one in class. All right, finding the nth term and the 30th term for each of the following. It says 825, 42, 59, 76. The way we do these is you find what is the difference between each of the numbers. It's going up by 17 every time. So we always put 17 in. The difference is 17, it's going up 17, so my finding, when I'm trying to find the nth term, I'm gonna put 17 in. But notice if I do 17 times one, in, it, in represents the, the number the the order, the, the sequence. So the first term would be when n is equal to 1. But if I let n be equal to 1, I have 17 times n. My first term is 8, not 17. So what do I do to 17 to get 8? I gotta subtract 9. So my nth term would be 17n minus 9. Notice the second term. If I do n equals 2 to get the second term, 17 times n is 34. 34 minus 9 does equal 25. So this is how I would find the nth term. To find the 30th term, I would just plug in the 30 for the n. 17 times 30 equals 510 minus 9 or 501. Okay, with that said, again, try doing these next one on your own the same way. Times the n is the difference between these numbers. And then this part comes, what do I need to do to get, for example, this one, my, my, my first term is 17 times 1. My first term is actually 8. So what do I have to do to 17 to get 8? Okay, let's do this one. So I got 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23. They're going up by 4 every time. So let's see if I can show this with only the 4. So there's my 4 in. But when I let n be equal to 1, 4 times 1 is 4. My first term should be 3. So what do I need to do to 4 to get 3? Well, all I got to do is subtract 1. To get the second term, n is equal to 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 
Again, it should be 7, so just subtract 1, that's going to hold. Put in the 30 for the end, 120 minus 1 gives me 119. Okay, let's do another one. What's happening here? What's happening to my numbers? Looks to me like they are going down by 8. That's the difference. The difference is negative 8. It's going down by 8. And then if I do 1 times negative 8, that gives me negative 8. My first term should be negative 7, so I've got to add 1 to it to get me to negative 7. 30th term, negative 8 times 30 is equal to negative 239. Again, just sort of familiarize with these. We'll, go, we'll do more of these in class. The last one, negative 11, negative 15, negative 19. This would mean that they're going down by 4. So if I'm going down by 4, that's a negative 4. That'll be a negative 4 times n, which is right there. But if I do my first term, if I put in a 1 for n, I would have negative 4 times 1, which would be negative 4. But my first term is actually negative 11. So what do I have to do to negative 4 to get it to negative 11? Subtract 7. So this is how I could write the nth term. To get the 30th term, I would just pull it, plug in the 30 for the n, subtract 7, you'll get 127. Again, more examples to follow. Just be familiar with this. All right. Super, 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 super vocab heavy. Coming up right here. We'll do a lot of this practice in class, but just have the, have, have the vocab ready to go. Okay, a conditional statement. It is a statement that can be written in the form, if P, then Q. If it rains outside, then the grass is going to get wet. Okay, if P, then Q. Where P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. If it rains outside, then the grass is going to get wet. How would I write that in symbols? This is how we write it in symbols. If P, then Q. That's, that's, what, that's how we would read that. If P, then Q. All right, this one, they use some statements. We're not going to talk about the symbol for statements negation. Some people use this sign, like a 7. You'll also see a little squiggly sign like that. They both mean not. Not, and then whatever comes after it. Well, again, we'll talk about this in class. Again, this arrow, if, then, like we saw up here. We can also do Venn diagrams. If the light is red, then I must stop the car. So whenever I have a red light, I'm stopping the car. So the red light belongs inside stopping the car. Because every time I see a red light, we're going to stop the car. This is important. Write this down. Inner oval, if I have a Venn diagram, is the hypothesis. Outer oval is the conclusion. Draw this picture on your paper, please. Okay, let's do that again. If I have to wear glasses, then I do not have perfect eyesight. So inner oval, hypothesis, I have to wear glasses. My conclusion, I don't have perfect eyesight. Okay. Inverse. So we talked about the conditional. The conditional says if P, then Q. The inverse is the statement formed by negating the hypothesis and the conclusion. We negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Again, I have plenty of examples. How would we do that in symbols? We either do like a seven. Again, this means not, like I said up there. So not P means not P. Q. I could also do a little squiggly. That also means not. Negating the hypothesis and the conclusion. That's what we call the inverse. The converse. It's the statement formed by exchanging the hypothesis and conclusion. So we don't negate them. We exchange them. We flip them. Remember the conditional said if P then Q. The converse says if Q then P. It just flipped the order. Contrapositive, the statement formed by both exchanging and negating the hypothesis and conclusion. We both flip the order and we make them both not. So again, symbol, again, I can do seven or a squiggly, not Q means not P. Okay, if you have to pause, pause. Logically equivalent statements, what does that mean? 
It means I have related conditional statements that have the same truth value. For example, the conditional and the contrapositive are logically equivalent. That means they say the same thing. So do converse and inverse. If you got to pause, pause that. All right, whole bunch of writing coming up here. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. I don't want to take any more time than I need to. So it says, let's test the truth of some conditional states. Write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive, and then find the truth for all. Okay. So if you are pre... So this is my P. If P, then Q. If you are in pre-AP geometry, then you have credit for algebra 1. Is that true? I'm going to say that's true. Okay. Now I'm going to do the converse. So I flip the order. Converse. I flip it. If you have credit for algebra 1, then you are in pre-AP geometry. Okay, is that true? So if you have credit for algebra 1, then you are in geometry. Could be true, but I could also be in algebra 2 or pre-cal or cal. So that one is false. Okay, inverse it. So I go back to my original order. I just make them both not. If you are not in pre-AP geometry, then you do not have credit for Algebra 1. Is that true? Again, I can be in Calculus, and so I would not be in pre-AP Geometry, but I could still have credit for Algebra 1. So, we're going to call that one false. Okay, the last one, the contrapositive. If you do not have credit for Algebra 1, then you are not in pre-AP Geometry. Think about that for a second and see that that is true. And like we said on the last sheet, the conditional, which was up here, and the contrapositive, which is the last one, are both true. These two will always have the same truth value. They'll either both be false or they'll both be true. And the two in the middle, the converse and the inverse, will also either both be true or both be false. But they will be the same. If an animal is a bird, then it is a robin. Is that true? If it's a bird, then it's a robin. Well, I could have a bird that's not a robin, so I'll call that false. Okay? And I'm going to do the converse, so I flip the order. If an animal is a robin, then it is a bird. Well, that sounds true. If it's a robin, it's definitely a bird. If an animal is not a bird, then it's not a robin. Yeah? True. If an animal is not a robin, then it is not a a bird. Well, I can have an Oriole. That's not a Robin, but it is still a bird. So that's false. So again, conditional, contrapositive will both be the same. Either both false or both true. Con converse and inverse, either both false or both true. They will be the same. Okay. If a student is a sophomore, then they are not in ninth grade. If they are a sophomore, they are not in the ninth grade. That's true. Okay. If a student is not in ninth grade, then they are a sophomore. Is that true? No, it's not true. I can be in 11th grade. That would be not in the ninth grade, but I wouldn't be a sophomore. So we'll call that one false. If a student is not a sophomore, then they are not not in ninth grade. That sounds funny to say that, but that just means if they're not not, a double negative, that means it's true. If they are not not in the ninth grade, that means that they are. So if a student is not a sophomore, then they are in the ninth grade? Maybe, but not always. So we're going to call that one false. And the last one, if a student is not not in ninth grade, they are not a sophomore. So if they're not not in the ninth grade, then they would be in the ninth grade, and they would not be a sophomore. So I'll call that true. We'll talk about these in class.